Why, hello, friends. We are back with a short and sweet What I Eat in a Day featuring some more easy, high-protein meal ideas. If you missed my previous high-protein full day of eating, I will link it down below for you to check out. Big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. More info on that later. And as you can see, I am still on the overnight high-protein oats for breakfast, and this week we made a PB&J flavored ones. For my liquids, I used a combination of plain unsweetened soy milk and the Siggy's plant-based coconut blend yogurt. You can use any combination of non-dairy milk and yogurt you like. I just went with these two because they're both pretty high in protein. We've got a tablespoon of chia seeds for some extra protein, healthy fats, omegas, fiber, all that good stuff. And then about a quarter cup of powdered peanut butter. And I sweetened it with a little bit of agave, which is optional. If you prefer, you can use regular peanut butter instead of the powdered, or you can substitute in your favorite plant-based protein powder. Once I combined all of those ingredients, I added in my quick oats. Give them a stir and then cover them and pop those in the fridge. This step is optional, but I do like to make them kind of cute and I transfer them to these little mason jars and I layer them with a little bit of raspberry preserves and some extra nut butter. But if you prefer, you can just keep it in one big container in the fridge overnight and then portion it out in the morning when you're ready to eat it. For lunch, I prepped a huge batch of the salad that I always come back to every time the weather starts to warm up. The base of it is a bunch of cabbage that I chop up finely. I like to use a combination of green and red cabbage just because I think it's pretty to have a bunch of colors in there. Some chopped carrots, some scallions, and some cilantro. If you want to get fancy, you can add in some mint or some Thai basil. And honestly, add in any extra veggies you like. Sometimes I'll add in some bell pepper or some spiralized zucchini. And look how beautiful all the colors look in this bowl. Super simple dressing. Just grab a jar and add in your favorite oil to use for salad dressings. I like to use olive oil. A Little bit of rice vinegar, toasted sesame oil, some soy sauce for that umami. Sweetened it with a little bit of agave, totally optional. And yes, you thought you'd never see the day, but I'm using a little bit of garlic from a jar. What can I say? I've just been feeling a little lazy lately and it works. Also adding in some edamame that I just defrosted. Then add in some of your dressing and give it a good toss. Now to bump up the protein in addition to the edamame, I also browned up some little tofu cubes. I just pan fried these with a little bit of salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. Super simple and savory. And I'm also adding in some roasted salted cashews. These just add the most satisfying crunch. You can use any type of nut or seed you like, but cashews are my personal favorite. And for even more of a crunch when I serve it, I like to top it with some wonton strips. You could also go with some chow mein noodles or, you know, skip it all together if you hate fun. But yeah, definitely try this salad. It is my absolute favorite right now. Now, quick pause to share a few words about today's sponsor, Skillshare, which is an online learning community that offers classes in thousands of different topics, from creative ones like photography and graphic design, to more business-oriented ones such as marketing, web design, and entrepreneurship. I've been taking classes through Skillshare since 2018, and the class I'm taking right now is called Introduction to SEO, Tactics and Strategy for Entrepreneurs with Rand Fishkin, who is the founder of a tech company. Basically, it's teaching me all the nitty-gritty of writing better content to to attract more traffic to my recipe website. I'm a lot more comfortable with the creative side of running a food blog. The technical stuff is always very intimidating to me. So it's really nice to have classes like these on Skillshare that are taught by experts and that lay out all the information for me in an organized way. If you are interested in trying out Skillshare for yourself, I'm gonna have a link in the description box and the first thousand people to use it can sign up for a free one month trial with Skillshare. It's a great way to begin exploring your creativity. Okay, for Din Din, I made a variation of this roasted tomato soup that I've made a couple times on the channel. I think it's just really good and very easy. The recipe is super flexible. I never measure anything. Just chop up a bunch of tomatoes, quarter a white or yellow onion, throw it all in a baking dish, or in my case, a cast iron skillet. Season it with some olive oil, salt, pepper. You can add in some dried herbs if you like. And then I add in a whole head of garlic. I just cut it in half and then I nestle it in there, pop it in the oven and roast it. I never time it either. It's probably in there for about 45 minutes to an hour. 
just until everything is nice and roasted and fragrant and the onions are kind of starting to caramelize a little. And in the meantime, I prep some ingredients to make some tempeh BLTs. This is my first loaf of homemade bread in a long time. It looks a little weird. I actually forgot I was making it and I overproofed it, hence the wonky top, but it still tastes really good. Then I have this tempeh bacon recipe on my blog. I'll link it down below. Go ahead and thinly slice a brick of tempeh and then no need to marinate it for this recipe. You're just gonna go ahead and combine all of the flavorings in a skillet. So some soy sauce, olive oil, a little bit of coconut sugar or maple syrup, onion and garlic powder, a little bit of liquid smoke, Add in your sliced tempeh and give it a toss and then put that on the stove and you're gonna bring it to a gentle simmer over medium high-ish heat. And once it's simmering, you're just gonna keep the tempeh moving until that sauce thickens and kind of forms a glaze on your tempeh. And once there's no more extra liquid in the bottom of the pan, you can serve it like that. But for the sandwiches, I wanted to crisp it up a little bit. So you can put it in the oven or in my case, I popped it into my air fryer basket and just let it go for about 10, 15 minutes on a low temperature until it was as crisp as I wanted it to be. Now back to our soup ingredients. Everything is nice and roasty toasty and I transfer it to a blender and the roasted garlic is nice and buttery and soft and you can go ahead and just squeeze it out of the skins. And usually to make this tomato soup creamy, I will add in some full fat coconut milk or vegan heavy cream substitute or a bunch of cashew cream. But this time around, I actually used a combination of white beans, which I cooked in the Instant Pot and a handful of raw cashews. And it really did give it a nice creamy texture while also adding in some extra protein and fiber. And then I just added in a couple of chicken style bouillon cubes. I just pureed all those ingredients together and then I poured it into a little sauce pot and heated it up. And in the meantime, I assembled my sandwiches. I had toasted my homemade sourdough with a little bit of butter in a pan, little schmear of veganaise, fresh sliced tomatoes, couple slices of our homemade tempeh bacon, some mashed avocado. This avocado was like perfectly ripe. It was so good. And then some fresh lettuce. And we have a nice little sandwich soup combo for dinner. For dessert, I made these bars that had an almond flour shortbread crust. These are kind of inspired by the Caramel Delight Girl Scout cookies. And then the filling was some toasted shredded coconut, some peanut butter, vanilla, a little bit of coconut butter, and then a bit of agave to sweeten it. And it kind of made like a chewy peanut buttery caramel filling. So I put that filling on the shortbread crust and then topped it with some melted chocolate. And that was dessert. And that is everything that I ate today. Hopefully this gives you some high protein vegan meal ideas to add to your rotation. And I will see you soon in my next video.